Welcome to part two of the Facebook Friday Q&A. Let's get started, shall we? Demetrius Blackwell, would wrestling be as popular today if it wasn't scripted? Well, it wouldn't really be professional wrestling if it wasn't scripted. And the whole notion that, you know, it being fake is a bad thing or scripted is a bad thing. I mean, most forms of entertainment are fake and scripted. It doesn't mean people stop watching them. Are zombies really walking the planets trying to eat our brains? No, but people love the fucking Walking Dead. And I'm just saying. Uh, David Benz, with how he keeps being booked to lose, could you see Dean Ambrose winning Money in the Bank? I mean, him cashing in later in the year on Seth Rollins would finally be him getting revenge for backstabbing the shield, or could it be the right thing to turn him heel? I believe, as I said in my WWE 2015 predictions video, is that um, I fully anticipated Ambrose turning heel at some point in time in the year. I can't remember if I said by the summer or by the fall, and I had him winning the Money in the Bank briefcase and that being an avenue to turn him heel, because why would the people want to cheer the guy they love? Well, let's try and force him to boo him instead. Uh, let's see here. Berwin Vargas, can the whole JBL be rating Ascension thing on commentary just be JBL sticking up for his fellow legends and the start of an APA Ascension uh, mini feud down the road? I've thought about that, and maybe that's something they're entertaining. I don't know. I just don't really think it makes a whole lot of sense because in this case here, JBL is supposed to be the heel commentator, and he's not putting over the heel team. It just doesn't make a lot of fucking sense to me. Jack Dunn, if Edge was still wrestling today, would he receive the same treatment from fans that the rest of the Fortunate Four received? No, because they love Edge so much more than Asina Orton or Batista. Uh, Edge is different, so no, he wouldn't nearly receive that treatment. He'd be the best of all times and all that other shit. Dylan Barton, if Royal or Rum or Rum cut cut myself a mini Reigns promo there. Jack in the Beanstalk. Uh, if Roman Reigns wins the Royal Rumble, can WWE avoid Reigns being booed if they book the match right? Well, I'm not really sure at this point. The only way they might be able to have been a able to avoid that is if Daniel Bryan wasn't back and I might have saved him until uh, the Raw after WrestleMania based off of the fact you might be heading in the Reigns direction and then I would have made sure that I booked him against Cena as the champion not Lesnar. It would have been the two things I would have had to have done to make sure that Reigns didn't get booed himself. You have to set up everything else to be right and make sure that certain pieces are and are not in place. Uh, Kuazad have you heard of XPW? I read that it closed down but opening for maybe a year or two. Do you know what really happened there? No, I really don't know what happened there. Yes, I've heard of XPW, and they're, frankly, to me, irrelevant. Charlie Kelly, ever watched the TV show Lost? Yeah, I think I watched a few episodes when it first uh, came out, and then I stopped. I can't remember what it was. Oh, I think it was the whole thing of they were on an island. Whoopi, they were on an island. I'm sure someday this show will have a stupid ending, and it sounded like it did. Uh, David Verrett, what's your all-time Chicago Bulls starting five? Uh, you'd have Sloan and Jordan in the backcourt, Pippen at the three, Gilmore at the five, and probably Horace Grant at the four. That would probably be the all-time starting five. Yeah, I would think so. Uh, let's see here what else we got. Uh, Chris was on. What do you think of the current announced team? <laughs> Should already know. And they also asked, Chris does. I always thought an announced team consisting of JBL, Joey Styles, and Paul Heyman would be amazing thoughts. No. Hell no. Styles was always best as a one man gang. Heyman was okay, but he needed JR to work off of. No, that sounds like fucking ridiculous disaster if you're asking me and you did so I told you Michael Corvin let's see here what do you think would happen when Rusev loses via pinfall or submission for the first time um that will be the real story here at that point in time the WWE could lose interest at that point in time the WWE could start to put him into MAGA hell uh, at that point in time what they would need to do is send him right for the title. So that's the only way you can follow up that long winning streak is you have to send him at the title and to champion whoever that may be. Uh, should Andy Kaufman be inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame someday? Yeah, I mean, if you're going to induct a celebrity, you might as well 
actually induct one that brought some buzz and some publicity and some eyeballs to professional wrestling and did something in professional wrestling. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Tom Hartnell, could you rank the top five wrestlers from Borneo? What the fuck? Davon Evans, when Macho Man first started doing Slim Jim commercials, was it corny or was it cool? Both, and it was awesome, and that was the Macho Man. Aaron Zach, if MLK didn't get killed, do you think he would have run for president and could have won? No, I don't. No. Because even at that time when he was assassinated, he was, what, almost 40? So even if you advance, let's say, 20 years later to 88, when Jesse Jackson made a little bit of a run for it in the Democratic primary, Martin Luther King would have already been, what, 60-ish, 59, 60-ish, and that wasn't the right time. And by the time it was right for Obama in 08, uh, MLK would have been almost 80 and possibly already dead due to natural causes or whatever reason. So... No, I don't think he could have run for president and won. Tomas Adams, should Stephanie McMahon induct Macho Man Randy Savage in the Hall of Fame? I think he already inducted her back about 20-something years ago. <laughs> uh, Dylan might as well be Schwartz. What's your current NBA Finals prediction? Um, At this moment, Wizards-Warriors might change, but at this moment, I'd have to say Wizards-Warriors. Uh. And do you plan on getting back into baseball this year? Uh, well, yeah, it'll help because I'll be more interested in the Cubs this year, so that'll help my interest in baseball in general, sure. Uh, let's see here. Um, Mario, the King of Hearts, Alcime. Would it be compelling enough for Triple H to put the authority's jobs on the line in his match against Sting at WrestleMania 31? And are you comfortable with the Cena versus Rusev encounter at WrestleMania 31? To that second part, no, I'm not comfortable with that in any way, shape, or form for reasons that should be obvious. As far as putting the authorities' jobs on the line, nah, I don't really think that needs to happen for Triple H and Sting. I still don't want to see Triple H and Sting. Uh, Luke Wynn Staley, will Vince intentionally sabotage NXT? Doing a hell of a job already, isn't he? He's not doing it specifically with the brand. He's doing it once they come up to the main roster, which is the ultimate form, the most effective form of sabotage. Vinny Iguacan, close enough. What plays do you think of when you think of Troy Polamalu? I don't know if I think of a specific play. When it comes to Polamalu, you wonder what I always think about? I always think about the fact that the Bears in 2003 were in a position to draft this guy after trading uh, the fourth overall pick to the Jets, who just had a hard-on for D. Wayne Roberson because of the Jets. But the Bears at 14, instead of taking this dynamic, explosive safety that could change their defense for years to come, uh, they took Michael Haynes. They took a guy that fit a scheme in theory for a coach that might not have been there past 2000. Just, that's what I think of when I think of Troy Polamalu. I think of the Bears' incompetencies and draft failures. I really do. Imagine if you're a Chicago Bears fan, if you would have just sat there and kept the second and third round picks the same in that 03 draft, and it was uh, Peanut, Tillman, and Lance Briggs. Imagine if you throw Polamalu with the mix in the first round. Holy Christ. Do you imagine a secondary with Mike Brown and Troy Polamalu and freaking Peanut Tillman? Holy shit. Uh, Callum Burgess, thoughts on SmackDown returning to Thursday night? Um, eh. I still wish they would go live. I almost wonder if Wednesday night might be the better night for them or Tuesday night. I'm not sure about Thursday night. Um, let's see here. We are pro wrestling. Had YouTube been around during the Monday Night Wars period? Which things that fans were romanticized about today would have been criticized? The consistent overbooking of shit. Um, Austin and The Rock always being featured in the same spot on WWF television. The NWO being overdone on WCW television. Uh, lack of storytelling in anything that ECW did. Oh, there would have been bitching and pissing and moaning all over the fucking place. Time heals a lot of wounds and romanticizes a lot of things, especially compared to today's current product. But if you don't think there was a lot of bitching about the product back then, and if you don't think there would be a lot of bitching about it, uh, if the same type of media environment existed back then as it does now, you're crazy and insane. Uh, let's see here. Let me see what else we got. Jonathan Pittman, with the confirmed induction of Randy Savage into the Hall of Fame, is there any chance we see Owen Hart inducted this year as well? It's possible. I don't know how likely, but it is possible. Anything's possible. Uh, Steven Jacobson, your thoughts on CM Punk's interview with Off the Record? Didn't watch it. I uh, didn't really care. 
I, somebody, I think I saw somebody said that he was talking about uh, Michael Landsberg's uh, hypocrisy, and Punk's wanted to talk about hypocrisy. I'm just saying. Uh, let's see here. Alan Pesson, how would you describe the stupidity of the WWE of having the commentator describe at least one match at every pay-per-view classic? Why does the WWE do that? Insecurity in what they have, understanding that it's not that great, so they need to oversell it. It's, it's just always been a part of the WWE hype machine is to oversell everything. And what it does is it ruins their credibility, and it ends up being a bad thing because, you know, everything's always going to be better. It just doesn't work that way. Aaron Zach, if the WWE draft was brought back, do you think it should be used to bring up guys from NXT? You could do that in part. I mean, but I don't want to see the draft because I don't want to see a brand split. Uh, Peter Gunn, interesting question. Should NXT be canceled since it's a waste of time because all Vince and Dunn do is change the wrestlers for the worst? A lot of the NXT watchers and supporters won't like this thought process, but... It ain't the dumbest idea in the world. And the only reason I say that is, why waste all your time and do all of this foreplay if this is just going to continue to be a problem as long as Vincent Dunner running the show? Because if they're talking about Ambrose Rollins, Reigns, what have you, well, now Vincent Dunn seemed to be of an even different mindset, and I don't see how anybody's going to succeed. I mean, you probably shouldn't cancel it outright, but honestly, what's the fucking point of having it? Uh... Let's see here. Brad Jaminette, do you think they will ever put Jeff Jarrett in the WWE Hall of Fame? I got one answer for you. One answer for you! The fuck? Jeff Jarrett. Oh my god. Look at me. I do it better than Jackie Fargo. I do it better than Ric Flair. I do it better than Ric Flair. Ah, shut the fuck up. Look at me like my grandson. I broke 6,000 guitars and I drew a fucking dime. Amen indeed. I have to go do my own company so that way I can keep the spotlight on me because I think I people actually give a fuck about me. Yay! Oh, Christ. Uh, Josh Giles, what do you think about merging the IC and U.S. titles at some point? Something that needs to happen. Aaron O'Brien, is there anyone that you personally see being the next face of WWE or anyone you would like to see as a face of the company to replace Cena? Um, I don't know if I've made up my mind on who should be the face of the WWE singularly on this current roster. I've talked about before the group of individuals I built the company around. As far as personally seeing as the next face of the company, I'm not sure that I do at this point because, you know, it's hard to envision when Cena will be gone. And until Cena is gone, what's the point of even uh, worrying about it? It's an exercise in futility and frustration, personally. Uh, Cynthia Davidson, which WWE divas, past or present, have you fapped to? And do you think Kobe Bryant was guilty of rape? What an interesting set of questions. I'm not sure about Kobe Bryant. I could have my thoughts, and maybe I'll gravitate to him being innocent just because of the fact he's an athlete, if I'm being honest. But, you know, the fact that they found two other uh, fresh semen samples on the girls' panties that supposedly came within a 24-48 hour period does not exactly bode well for her case. Doesn't mean that he didn't do it, however. I ultimately don't know. I can have my thoughts and my prejudgments, but that doesn't make me right. In terms of divas, I fat to past or present, um, and or imagined fucking instead of the woman I would be fucking. Going back in the day, it would have been uh, Trish Stratus for sure. You know, even fucking a black woman, I could still pretend it was Trish. <laughs> so yeah, it's not even so much just the fat to part; it's the pretending it's somebody else. <laughs> there you go. Oh, God. <laughs> Brain and Leslie, what could be done to make the Ascension better on the main roster? Stop doing the shit they're fucking doing with them. That's what the fuck they can do. Huh. Uh, Akir Sirkan, or is that Akib Sirkan? Uh, do you ever think about doing a reunion show with the old OTRS members, and is it going to happen? Oh, I think about it. And I can guarantee you this, when it comes to that, never say never.